Hello everyone, this is Xinhua Live. I'm Eric. We know that a number of enormous and record-breaking bridges have been built by China in recent years over the Yangtze River, which is behind me. You can see, have a look. It's China's longest river and also the third longest river in the world. And you know why? Today I'm wearing a helmet because today I'm going to show you around one of the super projects China is building right now here in the city of Changzhou in East China's Jiangsu province and yes it's a huge bridge and once it's completed it will be the cable state bridge with the largest span in the world and also it will features three in one one is the expressway and also an ordinary highway and a railway all together and today, uh, we have Mr. Guo with us. Hi, Mr. Guo. Hi. Uh, Mr. Guo is one of the staff with China Railway Major Bridge Engineering Group, the project's contractor. And he knows a lot about the bridge and the construction here. So, Mr. Guo, can you introduce some of the bridge and the construction here with us? Yes. The bridges start to construction um, on 19, 2019. Uh, it uh, will be take us uh, five and a half years to complete this bridge. Uh, it's expected to be uh, start to uh, traffic uh, on 2024. Can you show us around? Uh, let's may maybe we we can talk by walking. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I you said the bridge is gonna take you five years yes. to to uh, build, build such a project, right? Yes. So it must be a very difficult one. See, the bridge is very difficult to construct this uh, this uh, project. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the bridge itself? Like, what features uh, are the bridge have? Um, the bridge is uh, with uh, um, uh, ten kilometers long, uh, with a span of one thousand one hundred seventy six uh, meters. Uh, the the span is the uh, largest span in the world. The world's largest uh, main span of yeah. the of, of a cable state bridge, right? Yeah, uh, the bridge is a uh, expressway, um, and uh, ordinary highway and uh, Greek railway, three in one to cross the river. Oh, it's so it's a very unusual uh, bridge, right? Yes, this is a. Uh, Three to one to cross the world. Three in one. Okay. In one. So I know that the name of the bridge is called Changzhou Taizhou Yangtze River Bridge, right? Yeah. So uh, it means uh, it, the bridge connects two cities, Changzhou and Taizhou, and uh, it must mean a lot to the residents here, especially in the two cities uh, when the bridge is completed and open to traffic. So uh, do you have? something uh, to share with us, like the meaning of this bridge? Uh, as we all know, uh, uh, many of us have a previous car. If we, uh, if we cross the river, we have to, um, from Jiangyin, uh, it will take uh, one hour to cross the uh, Jiang uh, River. Uh, after the bridge uh, um, completed, um, it will be take about uh, 10 minutes to cross the Jiangke River. So from 1 hour to 10 minutes once the bridge is completed? Yes. Wow, it will be very convenient for the residents here. Yes, uh, after the bridge uh, completed, uh, it's uh, very, very convenient for us uh, to cross the world to do business and other communicate. Yeah, like people can travel around and do business and communicate with their relatives from other cities, right? Yeah. So can we go there and have a look? Yes, let's check here. Okay. So we're here standing on this huge thing and it's a caisson of a bridge. As you can see here, the caisson is below the water level and they told me it's about 65 meters below the water level. 
So, Mr. Guo, I actually I don't know what is a casein and why do you build it? The casein like the food or the bread. Uh, so it's just like, uh, from my understanding, it's like a, a watertight retaining structure uh, working on the foundations of a bridge pier, right? Yeah. So what's the size of this casein? Uh, the casein of the bridge is, is 95 meters long, about uh, 58 meters wide, and uh, 64 meters tall. It total weighs uh, uh, 227 tons. Uh, so, I know that the casing is not built here, right? So, how did it come up here? Uh, it was the first building in the city of Nantong, and uh, we used small car uh, vehicle to post it here. Um, uh, so, you know, in Nantong, it's about a hundred kilometers away from here. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, building such a casing it must be a very difficult task. What is the most difficult part have you guys have encountered uh, when building such a bridge? Uh, we built this uh, casing uh, on the river. Uh, it's very difficult than uh, on the level. Uh, last three years we have uh, flood. Uh, the, level, the water level is high than now. It's very difficult to um, uh, create a uh, uh, road. So you mean it's very difficult to construct a bridge uh, on the water and also we know that last year we have the flooding, right? It caused the water level to rise above the, 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 the formal form. So uh, I know that nowadays when China build big projects like this building a, a, a bridge, it will mostly use um, the most advanced technologies in the world. So, uh, I wonder what are the cutting edge technologies or equipment have you guys employed when building such a bridge? Yes, we have developed many robots, for example, to have drug uh, in the water. He have us uh, working in the water. Uh, is the, uh, the worker uh, become easy. Uh, we all use some um, smarter monitor uh, uh, system to monitor our kitchen. Yeah, so it's very uh, unique and it's most advanced in the world, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, can we go to your, you know, like your relaxing room here? It's because it actually it's a little bit cold out here. Okay, yeah. so let's go. So after a long walk, we're here at the monitoring room of the construction of the bridge. So Mr. Guo, is this the monitor system you mentioned before? Yes, yeah, from the screen, we can see every, every information of the kitchen. Look at this. We can see the kitchen have already located uh, below the world, world level. Yes, it's uh, so. This is the water level, yeah. and this is the casing. It's yeah. already uh, below the water level and reached its uh, planned location, right? Yeah. And this is the model of the casing. Yes. Okay, and also we can see the temperature, the wind, and everything. Every information about the construction here that you can monitor from this room. So, uh, Mr. Guo, how many colleagues do you have working on this project? About uh, 300 workers. 300 workers? Yeah. Okay, and we all know that last year, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we all had a tough time, and many workers have to stay at home to avoid the virus spread. So, they told me that the local government here in Changzhou has helped them to uh, pick up the workers and engineers from their hometown to ensure the construction and also they provide uh, like face masks and they have the materials for them to take temperatures every day and sort of things like this and to ensure the safety of the construction. So Mr. Guo, uh, at the spring festival actually is coming here, so do you have any plan of this uh, we, we know that the, many government has encouraged workers 
and residents to stay where they were to avoid the potential uh, virus spread. So do you have any plans for this uh, Chinese New Year? Um, Chinese New Year is coming. Uh, our college and I um, chose to stay here to work here. You, you all chose to stay here? Yeah. Will you miss your parents? Um, yes, I miss my parents and the grandma. Um, I choose to uh, send my wishes by phone. So you will call your parents and your grandma to send your uh, happy Chinese New Year? Yeah. Okay, very good. So thank you, Mr. J Mr. Guo, for your introduction. Hope you all the best. Okay. I know that you must be very impressed after seeing such a big ongoing project that China has taken right now. And you know that all the workers, they are trying their best to bring wonders to the world for the benefit of us people now and the future generations. And I hope everyone can have a better future tomorrow. And take care. See you next time. This is Xinhua Live, America.